Hello and welcome back. This is Dr. Kelly Pearson and we are on part four of sugar management where I hope you will really appreciate the importance of the glycemic index. When we look at carbohydrates, specifically carbohydrates because they're the only ones that break down into sugar readily, we measure that food determined determine on how quickly that food will break down into its very essential component part, glucose or sugar as we know it. Anything over 50 suggests that this particular food breaks down into the simple sugar very quickly, hence causing a spike in your blood sugar, which as we know now is problematic. And it's very surprising for people to recognize that bagels, which we eat in the morning with cornflakes, we think are good choices, but they have very high glycemic index. And a matter of fact, if you ate a Snickers bar, you'd have a, a lower glycemic index. Your blood sugars wouldn't raise as high. And why is that? Because the fat in that food keeps the sugar level down. And if you think you're giving yourself a break with white bread or wheat bread, sadly, there's no difference in the glycemic index. I'll give you a few more examples. Anything that's processed is going to have a higher score than non-processed. That's why the steel cut oats are at 55 and the instant oatmeal which has been processed is at 83. It breaks down into sugar much quicker. We think we might be doing a better job picking um, soda crackers versus graham crackers but look they're both at 74 and when we give our children a quote healthy unquote snack of a roll up that's essentially all sugar. An apple's at 39 even though it's sweet the fiber in the apple keeps the sugar down and you can get a sense of this. Interestingly enough, peanut M&Ms are only at 33. Why is that? Because the glycemic index of nuts is generally very low and that keeps the sugar levels lower. Another, another few examples I think are very important are baked potatoes are at 111. And Ireland was appreciative of that, of course, when they went through their famine, but recognize that if you want a starchy vegetable like that, a yam might be a better choice. Hummus is very low. Now there are natural foods in the world like baked potatoes and watermelon that have high glycemic index and before processed foods there were just times we needed a big bolus of sugar so that those were our go-to foods. And of course vegetables are lower and as I mentioned nuts like cashews are lower as are uh, beans. Let's, let's just for a moment talk about this concept of simple versus complex carbohydrates. Essentially the simple carbohydrates are sugar already so you're going to see a spike in your blood sugar and that glycemic index will already be high. A complex carbohydrate, if it's not already messed with or pre-digested if you will, is going to not spike the blood sugar as much. It will break down into the component part of sugar slower. So what is sugar? Really basically it is a combination of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen and these two substances glucose and fructose are what we refer to as monosaccharides. They fuel the body. Now that's much more complex than this but let's just assume these are the primary monosaccharides that this cells like to eat. As I mentioned before all processed foods have been pre-digested essentially um, artificially and those carbohydrates are ready to break down in sugar in your mouth because they want you to come back and, and, and buy more. When we talk about complex carbohydrates, really what this is, it's a combination of linked monosaccharides together. And some of these terms have been so confusing over, over time, but sucrose, not to be confused with sucralose, by the way, which is an artificial sweetener and not to be consumed, we'll discuss that later, Sucrose is table sugar and basically it's a disaccharide. It contains two sugar molecules, in this case fructose and glucose. Lactose comes from milk that makes which makes the milk so sweet, comes from two sugar molecules, galactose and glucose. And then polysaccharides are essentially uh, a bunch of monosaccharides put together and we recognize those as starches. And most of the carbohydrates you and I consume are starches. There are other types of glucose and sugar molecules that you may have heard of. For instance, glucosamine sulfate. That's really a, a sugar molecule with a protein known as an amino acid. 
and that gives you your ability to uh, build strength in the cellular matrix, such as uh, cartilage and substances of that sort. What are some examples of complex carbohydrates that break down super slowly? Well, those are the, exactly the things that the earth grows. <laughs> you add water to the seeds and the earth makes kasha, or otherwise known as buckwheat, or millet and teff and amaranth and quinoa and rice. These are all grains that are entirely carbohydrate. Well, certainly some of them have protein and, and other substances such as fiber. But these are complex carbohydrates that when you eat them, it takes a long, long time for those carbohydrates to break down into the glucose so you don't get that huge spike. So the bottom line is simple sugars are known as monosaccharides and they enter your bloodstream very, very fast. Remember now we talked about you can graciously handle about 12 grams of sugar every three hours. So you choose your path right now. If the red line is what happens when you're consuming sugar, you maybe eat, eat a little bit and your sugar spikes up. It takes a while for your body to figure out what to do with the sugar. It puts it into all the cells, maybe a little liver, turns some of it into fat. Now you get a low blood sugar and you're starving and you eat something, again, high glycemic index, and you pop up again. And this whole thing cycles back and forth all day long. This type of configuration of your concentration uh, in your bloodstream of sugar is very problematic. It not only causes inflammation of the arteries, we'll talk about more of that when we get to cholesterol, but it increases your tendency for pain, for inflammation. We know that unmitigated inflammation is suggested to be causative of cancer. It certainly leads to diabetes, exhaustion of your pancreas. It absolutely, as indicated, I think it warrants saying twice, pain, breakdown of joints known as osteoarthritis, and weight gain. Perhaps one of the things my patients have the hardest time to recognize is that you actually feed your pain when you take in too many unneeded carbohydrates. It is far better to stay away from simple sugars, and if you are going to do carbohydrates, which you certainly need some of, it's far better to do the complex carbohydrates that break down. And lastly, I want to leave you with the concept that so many of my patients are so frustrated they can't drop weight and they're doing all this fat-free food and artificial sweeteners and getting nowhere because they're eating huge amounts of processed foods and carbohydrates, perhaps hidden with high glycemic index, and that's what's keeping their body fat up. It's not necessarily their increased fat. So where are we headed? We're going to talk about a whole nother module next time around fats exactly, but if you'd like to check your knowledge base and see how well you've been able to really learn this information, download the PDF for this quiz and see how you do. Look forward to seeing you next time.